When it comes to keyboards, Android users are spoiled for choice. You obviously have Google's own Gboard, which offers a ton of neat features and capabilities, and you have a ton of third-party alternatives like SwiftKey, Flexi, Chroma, and more. Out of the lot, Gboard and SwiftKey are my top picks, and I often can't decide which one to use on my phone. If you feel the same, then this video is just for you. Hey guys, this is Abhijit from GT and today we are going to find out which Android keyboard should you pick for your phone. So let's get right to it, shall we? Now before we actually go ahead and compare the two apps, I would like to clarify that both Gboard and SwiftKey are great options, you can't go wrong with either. But if you want to take a more nuanced look at how they fare against each other, then this video shall help. Alright, so let's talk about the keyboards. I'm sure you have already used Gboard since it comes preloaded on most Android devices. It packs in some amazing features like a floating keyboard, GIF search, sticker packs and most importantly, predictions. Speaking of predictions, ever since I've used SwiftKey, I've noticed that the predictions it offers are much better than those offered by Jibo. I know it sounds hard to believe, but trust me, it's really true. And that's not just the only feature where SwiftKey trumps Jibo. When it comes to swipe typing, Jibo only lets you swipe out a single word at a time. And while that's fine for most people, if you're a power user, then you would prefer SwiftKey, which lets you swipe out both words and short sentences all with one continuous swipe. Isn't that cool? But do you know what's cooler? Themes. And SwiftKey beats Gboard in that aspect as well. The app offers a huge collection of free themes and it even lets you customize these themes or create your own from scratch. Now while Gboard also offers free themes, the collection here is a bit limited. There are just a few themes to choose from and there's not much in terms of customization. Sure, you can add your own image as the keyboard background, but that's pretty much it. Now, if you're an emoji person, then you'd be glad to know that both keyboard support all kinds of emoji stickers and GIFs. But in the case of Gboard, it's a bit easier to look up the emoji you want to use. You see, along with GIF search, Gboard also lets you look up emoji using keywords. Check this out. If I type moon in Gboard, it instantly brings up the moon emoji in the suggestions bar. But if I do the same on SwiftKey, I don't get the same result. Now, if I've never used the moon emoji on SwiftKey before, then I'll have to dive deep into the multiple tabs in order to find it. This makes Gboard far easier to use, at least for emojis. But if you want to add a symbol, then the situation is completely different. In Gboard, you'll need to long press on the period key and then swipe your finger to the symbol you wish to use. On the other hand, SwiftKey lets you quickly swipe from the period key to select the most common punctuation marks. And the rest of the symbols can be added by pressing and holding on the corresponding letter key. I feel that this implementation is much faster to use than the one offered by Gboard. Don't you agree? Coming to the most important differentiating factor, customizable layouts. With Gboard, you get the option to pick a one-handed layout, which is great for large devices, and the option to use a floating keyboard. But with SwiftKey, you also get an additional thumb layout, which is great for tablets. And you even have the option to resize the keyboard as per your preference. Isn't that great? Other than these small differences, it's just a matter of personal preference. Both these keyboards keep evolving with each successive update and bring new features like the incognito mode, which was added to the keyboards recently. There was a time when Gboard wasn't as feature rich, but that's not the case anymore. So it all boils down to these few additional features that SwiftKey has to offer. Since both these keyboards are free to use, I'd urge you to try them out for yourself first and then decide based on the features that you really like. Make sure to let us know your pick in the comments down below and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more such comparisons. This is Abhijit signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one.